In this video, I want to take a step away from Bayesian inference to talk about a classical topic, which is known as maximum likelihood estimation. So the idea here is that we have some sort of population of interest, and within that population, we suppose that there is some sort of true value of a parameter or a range of parameters, which I've called here theta. And the idea in this sort of analysis is that we have a sample from that population and what we're trying to do is we're trying to use that sample of data to make some inferences about the actual values of theta. And the idea with maximum likelihood is that we choose our parameter values, call it theta hat maximum likelihood, to maximize the probability that we would have obtained that sample. So the idea here is that if we were to draw our sort of likelihood here, so our likelihood is defined as a function of theta, so let's suppose we've just got one parameter we're interested in here. Then if we were to draw our likelihood function in this case, it might look something like this function I'm drawing here. And the maximum likelihood estimates of the parameter will just be this particular value which maximizes likelihood, the probability that we would have obtained that sample. And note here that the likelihood is an inverse probability. It's inverse because essentially we define likelihood as a function of theta. And because of the fact that this sort of integral over all range of theta doesn't necessarily have to integrate to one, then it's not a valid probability density. So that's why you hear it referred to as an inverse probability rather than just a probability density itself. So let's now think about a particular example. Let's think about the example as to when we're flipping a coin. If the coin comes up heads, then we suppose that our sort of random variable takes on a value of 1. If it comes up tails, then the random variable takes on a value of 0. And the idea here is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to make inferences as to the probability of a heads, which I'm just going to call theta here. And we know that in this example, we can write down our likelihood function as a function of theta given x as just being equal to theta to the power x times 1 minus theta to the power 1 minus x. And this is just a Bernoulli likelihood. And the idea here is that if x equals 1, then the second expression here is just all to the power 0. So I just get theta. In other words, the probability of a heads, which makes sense. And if x is 0, then it's this first part of the expression, which actually becomes 1. So then we just get 1 minus theta, which is, of course, the probability of just getting a tails. And note here that we're holding x fixed and we're varying theta. So you can see again why likelihood is an inverse probability. So in this example, let's write down what the likelihood would be if we had a first throw that was a head, a second throw that was also a head, and a final throw that was a tails. In that circumstance, we can sort of reasonably suppose that we have a random sample, in which case they're independent, which means that we can get the overall likelihood by just taking the product of the individual likelihoods. So in this example, we just get theta squared times 1 minus theta, as our overall likelihood of obtaining that sample of observations. And we can actually multiply this out, so we just get theta squared minus theta cubed as our overall likelihood here. So then we differentiate likelihood with respect to theta, and that just gives us 2 theta minus 3 theta squared. And if we set that equal to 0, that then defines our maximum likelihood estimates of the parameter theta which if we then go around and solve this, we get that theta hat maximum likelihood in this particular example is just two thirds, which makes sense intuitively because that's just the proportion of heads that came up out of our throws. But let's take a step back from this for a second. Do we actually think that this value of two thirds is particularly reasonable? Because of course, there's no way we could have got the fact that the coin was fair from throwing it three times. In fact, if we write down the sort of sum of xi that we could have got in any circumstance here and the corresponding maximum likelihood estimate, then we might see that our maximum likelihood estimates aren't as good as they might appear to be on first glances. So for example, we could have got the fact that we got three tails, in which case the sum of xi would just be zero, and a maximum likelihood estimate would also be zero. We also could have got the fact that we just got one head, in which case we would have got a maximum likelihood estimate of the probability of a head as a third. We reasoned in this example that if we had two, then the probability would be two thirds. And then finally, if we got three heads, then our probability would be one. And we could ask in any of these examples, is the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameter particularly useful? I mean, really, do we think if we got no heads, that the probability of getting a head is exactly zero? Does that seem reasonable? 
And similarly, if we got three heads opposed to three tails, and we got the maximum likelihood estimate out of a head as one, do we also think that that's reasonable? And notice that in none of these circumstances are we actually including the sort of value of a half, which is probably the value which we would think was a priori most likely for flipping a coin. Obviously, this example is a bit contrived, and via giving an interval of estimation of our parameter, then the idea is that you could include that sort of half value. But on first glances, you can see that maximum likelihood potentially has some problems, and the problem is that in small samples, maximum likelihood can actually be quite biased. I want to finish off this video by just talking about how we actually evaluate, in the case of maximum likelihood, our variance of our estimates. I mean, how sure are we about the fact that we've estimated a parameter to be a particular value? And I want to compare the likelihood which I've drawn here with the likelihood which I'm drawing here in the MOVE line. So notice that in both cases I've tried to draw these things such that they will produce the same maximum likelihood estimates of the parameter. But would we be as sure in both cases about our estimate of the parameter? Well, I hope you can see that in this first example we've got a rather narrow range of the parameter which will give us a likelihood as high as that, whereas in the second case there are a much wider range of parameters that will give us a likelihood which are close to the maximum likelihood estimates. So there's something to do with how steep our function is, which corresponds to a degree as to how confident we are about our estimates. And actually, it's the variance of our maximum likelihood, which we say is proportional to 1 over the curvature of our likelihood. Because the curvature here, in the case of the blue line, is much greater, which means that at the maximum likelihood estimates of the parameter, the curve is changing that much more quickly, hence meaning that it's that much more steep. So we can measure curvature by actually taking the second derivative of, it's not actually the likelihood, we actually normally use the log likelihood, and actually because curvature is negative, we put a negative sign and we actually use an expectations operator out in front of that. But that's the way in which we sort of produce estimates of standard errors in the case of maximum likelihood estimates.